All right, chapter 13-2 and chapter 13-4. Um, 13-2 is stem and leaf plots. 13-4 is box and whisker plots. Um, we're gonna do them both together. Both are pretty simple um, ideas and both are just ways to share data. So if I were to pull just this class and ask you know, who eats pizza once a week, who eats hamburgers once a week, there's only a few of you in here. So it wouldn't be hard for somebody to look at the data and not have to have a big graph or plot to show the data. But if I was to poll the whole school and ask who eats pizza once a week and who eats hamburgers once a week, you wouldn't wanna have to sift through, what, 300, 400 answers to find how many people eat pizza or how many people eat hamburgers. It would be much easier to look at that data if the, if the person who gathered the data put it together in some sort of a pie graph or um, a bar graph or a stem and leaf plot or a box and whisker plot. Um, if you do that, then the person who's reading the data doesn't have to sit and go through all of the data. They just have to look at your graph and they can look and, and kind of see the results of your survey. So we're gonna look at how to complete stem and leaf and box and whisker. And once you know how to complete them, then in turn, you automatically know how to read them because if you can create one, you can certainly look at one and understand where the data comes from. All right, so stem and leaf plots. These are extremely simple as once you kind of know what you're looking for, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do to create a stem and leaf plot is you are going to give yourself a little T chart here. And on one side, you're gonna put stem and the other side, you're gonna put leaf. So if you look at your data here as a whole, kind of the nice thing about stem and leaf plots is you don't really have to put them in order of, of least to greatest first. Um, if, you are, if, if you like to do that and you wanna put it in the order of least to greatest, you can, but you can also just go through your data and kind of pull it out one at a time, least to greatest in your head. It doesn't matter to me which way you do it, okay? The stem part of your graph, if you look at your data here, we have 68, 63, 70, and so on and so on. All of them are two digit numbers, right? So that tells us that the stem is always your greatest digit and your leaf is your single digit. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at all of these, all of these numbers, there's a one and a 10 spot, right? 68, the six is in the 10 spot, the eight's in the one spot. Does that make sense? Well, to do a stem and a leaf plot, first you look at just your 10 spots, okay? And we're just gonna look and see. We've got sixes, sevens, fives, more sevens, six, seven, six, six, and seven. So I've kind of underlined here, these are all my stems or they're my 10 spot. Well, the lowest one is five and the greatest one is seven. So in our stem side, we only need a five, a six, and a seven because we have 50s, 60s, and 70s, okay? Once you have your stem side down, now we go in to fill in the leaf side. Well, with a stem of 50 or with a five in the 10 spot, the only number we have, is that right, is 59, right? So the stem is 50, the leaf is nine and the two together make up the number 59. So that's 59 is taken care of. And if you wanna mark up your data once you've used it, so you know at the end you've used them all, that's fine. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the 60s. So we're gonna list all the 60s. Now you do wanna list the 60s lowest to greatest. So this is where it's totally up to you. If you want to come down here and you want to list them least to greatest, you certainly can or if you wanna just kind of scour through the data and find the lowest one and then move up from there, you can do that as well. Um, I like to mark off the data as I use it. That way I know I've used all my data at the end. I've got all my data in my, in my plot. So I'm looking through my 60s here and I've got 68, 63, 64, 68, 61, and 66. So my lowest one is 61. So I'm gonna represent 61 in my stem and leaf plot by putting a one here. And that means that the, the data of 61 is in my plot and then I'm gonna mark it off that I've used it. And then I'm gonna look for my next highest 60, which is 63. So I'm just gonna put a three out here. And that tells me that 63 is part of my data. 
Now I'm gonna look for my next and it's 64. So I'm gonna put a four in my leaf side. That tells me that 64 is part of my data. And then 66, right, that's this one. So that one's been used. Now you'll notice 68 is in there twice. You wanna represent every number. So we're gonna put an eight in there twice. And that should be all of my sixes, okay? Now I move to sevens. I've got two 70s, so I'm gonna put two zeros. I have a 73, so I'm gonna put a three over here in my leaf spot. That takes care of that one. And I have a 78, so I'm gonna put an eight over here in my leaf spot. Now, the only other thing you want to do with stem and leaf plots, and it doesn't say it in the direction, so you might want to add this to your notes here, okay, is you want to give your readers or you want to add a key, a key of how to read this. It basically tells your readers how to read your stem and leaf plot. So what it means or what you do, and this is super easy, you take any one of your data points. It does not matter which one. If you take the 59, Here's what you're gonna tell your readers, that five slash nine equals 59. That's telling your readers how to read your STEM plot. And you can pick any one of the, you could do six slash three and then equal 63. Does that make sense? You could do six slash eight equals 68. It doesn't matter which one you pick. So if you were given the STEM and leaf plot, okay, and you weren't given any of this right here, if this was not given to you and you were only given the stem and leaf plot, you could look at the stem and leaf plot. If you were asked to list all the data, you would list it as 59 and then 61, 63, 64, 66, 68, 68, 70, 70, 73, 78. You could list all the data. You could find the average. You could find the median. You could find the mean. You could find the mode. Mode's kind of easy. Oh, I think we have a tie here, don't we? We have a tie from 68 and 70. But you can find any data you want from this. You don't have to have them listed out like this. You can, get, you can have them given to you in a stem and leaf plot. Just list them out yourself and then count, find the middle, that's your median, add them all up, find your mean, look to see what happens the most. Um, and then the range here would be what? From 59 to 78. So you just find the difference between 78 and 59. Okay, easy peasy. All right, the only other thing I want to cover, and it's because it's on your homework, but it is not in any of these examples, is what if you have data, and I'll just do a, like a three, I'll just do quick data. I'll do a three, a four, and a 10. If I wanna do a stem and leaf plot for this, what's my highest, um, how do I wanna say this? What are my stems here? I got two digits here, right? So one is a stem. Blake? Oh, that is one. Yeah, so it, I gotta think of, I gotta figure out what stems I'm gonna use. I know I'm gonna use a one as a stem. What do you think I'm gonna use as a stem for that? <laughs> a zero. So if you have a single digit number and a double digit number, your stem for the single digit is zero, and then the other stem would be a one. So you would have zero, three, zero, four, and one zero. Does that make sense? And I just, I add this because there's one like that on your homework, but there's not one, there's not one like that on the original examples that were given in this. So I wanted to make sure. All right, so let's look at this number four here. So I'm gonna give myself, and I'll show you here in a second why I'm making it so long, but I've got a stem and a leaf side. Now, if I'm just thinking about this in terms of a tens column, okay, I've got eight, four, 10, one, and 11. Does everybody see how I converted a three digit number? I can still do a stem in the 10 spot, but I'm gonna have, now what's my smallest stem? No, oh yeah, one, <laughs> sorry. Yes, my smallest stem is a one. It's my Monday. <laughs> and what's my largest stem? 11. So my stem side has to have all of those. One, two, 
three, four, all the way up to 11. Even though I'm not gonna use them all, I have to represent everything from the lowest to the highest, okay? And then the, the easy part here is just 16 is represented the stem of one, the leaf of six. Then my next one would be 49, stem of four, leaf of nine. So there's those two. And then 86 would be next. So it would be eight, six. And then 10, one. So I could put 10, one. And notice, right, the number is 101 and I eventually have 101 here. It's just 10 is on the stem side, one is on the leaf side. And then for the 11, I would have a nine. And again, 119 is represented by 119. It's just part of it's on the stem side and part of it's on the leaf side. So I'm not saying this is possible, but like if it went up to the four digits, mm -hmm. you have to do the three. Uh, like yeah, so if you had a number like 1,128, you would have your, well, your stem side would have to be numbered forever. But then eventually down here, you would have 112 and eight. So your leaf side is always your ones column. And then the stem side can change depending. But on, your, on what you're going to be dealing with, you won't have any that have that big of a difference. Okay, are we good with stem and leaf? All right, flip to the back. We're going to talk about box and whisker. Box and whisker is a little bit more detailed. First of all, I want you to leave yourself a note here that you do have to list these least to greatest. Okay, that's part of your, part of your steps. Okay, least to greatest. And then I'm here in the second, here in a second, I'm gonna scroll to the bottom and I'm gonna give you some steps. And I want you to take just a minute to write these steps out. Okay, so here's your steps. They won't make a lot of sense yet, but they will make more sense as we go through them. So there's your steps. Take a minute to write those out. All right, if you're not done writing this down, I'm gonna go ahead and go up and do these. And then at the end, I'll put this back up so you can go back and fill in the blanks, okay? And that way I, I wanna be able to do a couple of these examples really quick before the bell rings. So I will put this back up here in just a second. All right, so box and whiskers. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to put them in order from least to greatest. So I'm just gonna rewrite these here. Um, the eight. 14, 20, catch me if I go off here because it's easy to miss these. 20, not, uh, nope, 28 and 29. If it's in there twice, list it twice. And 30, 31, 32, 35, 36 and 42. That all of them. And I, I like to count my originals and then count my new list just to make sure I have the same number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay. So um, step one, list them in order of greatest to least. Step two is draw a number, number line. Now your number line is, you're just going to have to kind of use common sense to draw this. My data goes from eight to 42. So I need my number line at least to go from 
five to 45, right? I need my number line to be as a little bit bigger than my data. So I'm going to draw a number line here. Now, does it make more sense to do 42 little slashes or maybe count by fives? Yeah, so I would count by fives here. So I would go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. And then I'm going to label what I just did. I did 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So now I have a number line that's long enough to hold all of my data, which is what I needed. And then step three here in our list of steps was mark the lowest data, the highest data, the median, and then the LQ and, oh, that should have been UP, UQ. Sorry, let me fix that real quick. Lower quartile and upper quartile. That's what that stands for. And I'll talk, that's big words for a very, very simple idea. Okay, so highest date, lowest, highest, median, and then the quartiles. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, this is this part's really easy. I'm going to do this up above the number line, and I'll show you why here in just a second. So I'm going to put eight is right here, and that's my lowest data. And I'm just going to put an L above it so I remember, because you're going to have a lot of dots here, and you got to remember what's what. 42 is my highest data, so I'm going to put my H there. That's my lowest and my highest. Now I'm gonna find my median. Well, I've got 11 data points. So five on one side, five on the other, that makes the sixth one, the, the dead middle. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five. No, one, two, nope, math is hard. One, two, three, four, five, there we go. One, two, three, four, five. I have five on the left, five on the right. So my median is 30. So right above the 30 slash, I'm gonna put an M. That's my median. Now, the next thing, the graph is the lower quartile. Like I said, this is really fancy term for a very simple idea. Not including the median, put a circle or a square around all the data that's left to one side of the median. Now find the median of that. So it's basically the median of the median. That's what a quartile is. Yeah, so I'm, whoops. So I'm going to put a square around 20 and then right above 20, I'm gonna put LQ because that is my lower quartile. Just Gordon. I don't have her yet. Oh, in fourth hour. Oh, yeah, I can tell her. I can tell her fourth hour. Yep, I can tell her. All right. Yep, I'll tell her. Thanks. <laughs> so upper quartile, same idea. Okay. Just look, whoops, just look at all the data to the right of your median. Okay. And then find the median of that. So the median of that is 35. So right above 35, that's your upper quartile. So I've got everything labeled. I've got my lowest number, my highest number. I've got my lower and upper quartile and my median. Now the very last step is to draw your box and whiskers. And here's the way you draw your box and whiskers. Your box just boxes in your two quartiles. Median kind of hangs around in the middle. It doesn't really get anything attached to it. And then your whisker this way goes out to your lowest and your whisker this way goes out to your highest. Hmm? I don't know why last year I hated this. Really? Yep. It's really not bad once you break it down. But when I first started looking at this, I was like, oh my goodness, this is a lot. And it really isn't, but it seems like a lot. And what this means is that the majority of our data fits in the box. And then you've kind of got outliers, just little whiskers, a few points to the left, a few points to the right. But if I was to ask you just by looking at this box and whisker plot and not having all of the individual data points, if I was to say, where does the bulk of your data fit, you would say between 20 and 35, right? That's where the bulk of our data fits. And then you've got some outliers that kind of whisker out. The eight and the 14 are kind of whiskers this way and the 36 and the 42 are kind of whiskers the other way. But this means the bulk of your data is there in the middle. 
Now, I do want to cover one thing, and I'm actually not going to take the time to do the whole process. I just want to show you something. On number four, I'm going to list this really quickly, lowest to highest. So catch me if I make a mistake here. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to do something even simpler. I'm going to just make up some easy data to make it a little bit faster. I think that's probably smarter. All right, so I'm just going to make up some data here. Um, I'm going to go two, three, four, six, eight. Okay, so if I was to do a box and whisker plot, I need uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, 5, 10, 15, 20. And I need to list my lowest at two. That's my low, my high at 18. There's my high. Now I need a median. So my median is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So my median would be what? Okay, here's what I want to show you. My median is seven, okay? So my median goes right here. Because I did not use six or eight, okay? Technically, I did not use six or eight yet. My median was not six or eight, it was in the middle. When I go to do the whiskers to the side, okay? I need to still include that six because I really didn't use six yet for the median. So the lower quartile would be 3.5, okay? So my lower quartile would be here. And then my upper quartile, again, I didn't use eight. So eight has to be included in my grouping there. So my upper quartile is, what's that? 23, so it'd be, 11.5, something like that. Okay. So if you don't, so that the difference there is that if your median is actually a middle point, you don't use it in your quartiles. If your median is in the middle, you still have to use the other points as quartiles. Hang on, on your homework, you're only going to do, I'm doing this for the video and then I'll have you, I'll tell you guys again. You're only going to do on the front, number one and number four, and on the back, number one and number seven. Okay. For those of you at home, email me if you have any questions. Thank you.